Have you heard that keto and low carb diets aren't healthy because they exclude whole grains, fruits, legumes, and other foods that provide vitamins and minerals? Well, it simply isn't true. Today I'm going to show you how easy it is to eat a healthy, delicious, low carb diet that provides all of your nutrient needs. Although I'm mainly going to be talking about micronutrients like vitamins and minerals, I'd like to briefly cover macronutrients, or nutrients we eat in larger amounts. The three macronutrients, or macros, are proteins, fats, and carbohydrates. Now, two of these macronutrients provide essential nutrients, the kind we need to get in our diet because our body can't make them on its own. Protein provides nine essential amino acids, fat provides two essential fatty acids, and carbohydrates provide glucose, but zero essential nutrients. That's because your body can make any glucose it needs from amino acids, glycerol, and other substances. In fact, the U.S. Institute of Medicine textbook on dietary reference intakes for several nutrients states that our body doesn't actually need any carbs at all, as long as we eat enough protein and fat. What about fiber? Fiber can help you feel full, keep things moving along in your GI tract, and it can be fermented into short-chain fatty acids that nourish the colon and can potentially provide other health benefits. But it isn't essential for life. Some people do great when they eat a lot of fiber, others do best with very little fiber in their diet, and most of us fall somewhere in the middle. You can play around with the amount of fiber in your diet to see what works best for you. Foods that are high in fiber but contain very few digestible carbs include avocado, artichokes, berries, especially blackberries and raspberries, cruciferous vegetables like broccoli, cauliflower, and Brussels sprouts, and most nuts and seeds. Like all the minerals I'll be talking about today, potassium is an essential mineral. Potassium helps maintain normal blood pressure and fluid balance and plays important roles in transmitting nerve signals and controlling muscle contractions. When you first start a ketogenic diet, your potassium needs may increase due to fluid shifts and changes in your metabolism. But the truth is that even people on quote unquote normal diets often don't get the RDA for potassium, which is 3,000 to 4,700 milligrams per day. Now, what's the number one food most people think of as a good source of potassium? Bananas, of course, and potatoes are a close second, but they're both really high in carbs. Fortunately, there are several low-carb foods that provide as much or more potassium than bananas and potatoes. These include avocados, cooked chard and spinach, cooked mushrooms, Brussels sprouts, and salmon and meat. Magnesium plays an important role in over 300 processes that occur in your body. These include building and maintaining healthy bone and muscle, regulating blood sugar and blood pressure, and supporting healthy nerve function. And no matter what diet people follow, many of them don't meet their daily magnesium needs, which are 320 milligrams per day for women and 400 milligrams per day for men. That's because although many foods contain small amounts of magnesium, very few foods contain a lot of it. Some of the best keto-friendly magnesium sources include hemp seeds, cooked greens, pumpkin seeds, fatty fish, especially mackerel, chia seeds, dark chocolate, and the higher percentage of cocoa, the better, and artichokes. Calcium is well known for maintaining healthy bones and teeth, but it also plays several other important roles, including blood clotting, muscle contraction, and regulating heart and nerve functions. The RDA for calcium is 1,000 milligrams per day for most people, and it's best to get it from food if possible. Fermented dairy products like all types of cheese and plain Greek yogurt are great sources of calcium. But if you avoid dairy or don't eat very much of it, you can meet your calcium needs with non-dairy sources that don't have many carbs. 
such as extra firm tofu, calcium fortified almond milk or other plant milk, sesame seeds, canned salmon or sardines with bones, and cooked leafy greens. Selenium is a mineral involved in thyroid hormone production, DNA synthesis, and reproductive function, among other things. It's considered a trace mineral, meaning you only need it in very small amounts, and getting too much could lead to toxicity. On the other hand, getting about 70 to 200 micrograms per day is crucial for optimal health. Excellent keto-friendly sources of selenium include fish, shellfish, meat, poultry, and nuts, especially Brazil nuts. In fact, Brazil nuts are so rich in selenium that you shouldn't eat more than two or three per day to make sure you don't get too much of a good thing. Choline isn't a vitamin or mineral, but it's often grouped with the B vitamins because they share similar structure and function. And it is considered an essential nutrient, even though our bodies can make small amounts of it, but we really need to get most of it from our food. Your brain and nervous system need choline to regulate memory and thought processes. Choline is also involved in muscle contraction and is important for liver health. Eggs top the list of keto-friendly choline sources, and to be more specific, egg yolks. Other great sources include liver, and fish, red meat, and poultry. Vitamin C plays important roles in immune function, wound healing, collagen synthesis, and creating neurotransmitters, or chemical messengers. It's also a powerful antioxidant that helps protect your body's cells from free radicals, which are unstable electrons that can cause inflammation and increase disease risk. The RDA for vitamin C is 60 milligrams per day. Fruits, especially oranges, are often considered the best source of vitamin C, but most fruits are too high in carbs and sugar for a keto or low-carb diet. Instead, go for bell peppers, strawberries, and cruciferous vegetables like kale, cauliflower, and broccoli. Vitamin D is actually considered a hormone because of its effects on the endocrine system, immune system, and other metabolic pathways. One of the few foods that's naturally high in vitamin D is fatty fish, like salmon, sardines, and mackerel. Full-fat dairy products like cheese also contain small amounts of vitamin D. And although most plants don't provide any vitamin D at all, mushrooms have some vitamin D. The amount depends on the type and how they're grown. The RDA for vitamin D is 600 to 800 international units, depending on age, but this may not be sufficient to maintain optimal blood levels of vitamin D of 50 to 100 nanograms per milliliter. To see whether you're meeting your vitamin D needs, have your levels checked to see whether they're too low. Now, vitamin D technically isn't an essential nutrient since your body can make it when exposed to the sun. But even if you get sun and eat foods that contain vitamin D, you may still need to take supplements to maintain levels in the optimal range. Your primary care provider or dietitian can recommend the amount to take and monitor the levels of vitamin D in your blood to make sure they stay in the safe, healthy range. So did you notice many of the same foods coming up repeatedly for the different nutrient categories? That's pretty powerful evidence that choosing minimally processed, low-carb animal and plant foods can help you achieve a healthy, nutritionally complete lifestyle. If you want to know some good, low-carb food sources of other nutrients, just ask me in the comments. Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please remember to like, subscribe, share, and comment. Thanks again, and I'll see you soon.